Hey, TGIF friends. I am really excited to bring to you today's uh, live show topic, which is all about how to lower your inflammation levels. Um, as a naturopath, we, we really focus on the root cause of illness and disease, and inflammation is the root of all, all evil. So welcome to all of you joining. This is our daily natural health news show where we talk all about how to equip you and your families with natural resources to stay well and healthy during this perilous time. So welcome to all of you joining. We've got Dorothy. Hey, Dorothy, what part of Georgia are you tuning in from? I'm here in, in uh, just north of Atlanta in Roswell. And um, gosh, there there's a lot of news to cover today before we even dig into uh, our discussion about inflammation and really how I, uh, what I recommend to just reduce your inflammatory burden uh, within your body. So this actually will help you if you are experiencing any autoimmunity, any type of weakened immunity, any um, potential risk factor categories you might find yourselves in, these tips will be extremely powerful. So hi, Jana. And, um, oh, Dorothy's in Hinesville. Oh, I know where that is. Um, so welcome to all of you joining. I feel like it's a weird morning. I don't know if anybody else is feeling like that, but uh, we've been kind of slow to motivate here in our house. And um, we are going on now two weeks of homeschool. And I, you know, it is clear my profession was not meant to be a teacher. <laughs> so any other mommies out there feeling like this? <laughs> So, um, so I try to add humor to our morning because we have a lot of crazy stuff happening and it can be very stressful. So anyway, I can uplift you, empower you and encourage you and bring you some laughter. Then I feel like I've done my job. So let's dig in to the news of the day. Um, the U S technically has surpassed China in our case load, uh, regarding positive tests that have come back and, this is, is despite having a testing crisis um, and completely separate uh, of our healthcare crisis. So this is really, really eye-opening. And um, I believe our county, from what Brian was telling me yesterday, I don't know if this is experience, you're experiencing this, Dorothy, but our county is in a work from home, stay at home mode. And um, Brian told me he talked with his, um, his, boss, essentially, there's like a middle space in between him and, and the, the next level. But um, he was talking with him and he um, is Australian. And he's like, do whatever you guys have to do, be safe, be well, you stay at home as long as you need to. So I'm grateful for that because of Brian's autoimmunity. Um, but oh, we've got Pakistan. Hi, Farida. Um, and the Netherlands, Raquel, I actually have some reporting to do about the Netherlands. Um, so hi, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. And Whitney's on. Good morning, Whitney. So welcome to all of you. We're going to dig into the health news and comment down below where you're tuning in from. And also, if you are interested in really digging into um, some of the ways to lower your inflammation levels in your body, because that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. And on temp, I just warmed up my... Um, I'm drinking my bone broth. So this has some lemon oil, turmeric, and it also has some MCT oil. It's kind of floating on the top. So, all right. So the US, we're now number one. We are technically the new epicenter of the disease. Um, I, I debate that because I think we're seeing other cases internationally, like the Netherlands, um, particularly like Europe right now is really taken off, like Spain. They had in one day almost 6,300 new cases, 493 deaths in one day. Um, Belgium is really blowing up. They've got 1,000 cases yesterday, 69 deaths. Germany, I have several friends, and you, many of you know, I was planning on, it hasn't been derailed yet, but I, I would imagine we're going that route. I was planning on doing an extensive um, certification training program at um, the only, uh, and it's quite a world premiere, a lymphedema facility with a lymphedema doctor um, and, and lymphatic disorders. Um, so I'd be spending time in Germany. Right now, Germany had 3,300 um, 
cases, positive, positive cases yesterday and 14 deaths. Um, we are seeing the numbers globally doubling every two to three days. So we're in that exponential growth mode. And um, the U.S. Um, it has some new hotspots coming up. And I'll talk a little bit about those. Um, I think it's important to note we have our first world leader who has tested positive, Boris Johnson. I think he's the prime minister. Yeah, he's the prime minister of um, England or Great Britain. Um, he was really slow to move on protective measures of staying at home. And Anita, who is our trucker, hey, Anita, good morning. She said um, truck, truck stop. So she drives, she's trucking and moving supplies for all of us. Um, she said the truck stop has e-signs uh, takeout only and that there are e-signs saying it is essential you stay home on the highway. Um, and she said the road are, the roads are still full, full of commuters. Hopefully they're just driving around in their cars. I know we are probably going to get out of the house and drive around, but we're not going anywhere. Um, so um, <clears throat> It's pretty, pretty substantial what we have happening. Um, and so it becomes so crucial um, to really stay at home, take measures to protect yourself, take measures at your doorstep with packages. I, I still think we just don't know. We're, we're in the infancy of this new virus and we don't know a whole lot about its impact on the body um, and also the transmission. So the U.S. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, right now, new hotspots coming up that are showing growth. Uh, Chicago and Detroit. Um, Detroit is breaking my heart. And um, I'm going to try not to get really upset because it's just so crazy. Like, you know, I feel for all the healthcare professionals that are the frontliners and the healthcare system is already in a crisis mode. We already have healthcare staffing shortages. You all may or may not know this, but when I was putting myself through my master's and my doctorate program, I actually worked in healthcare staffing and I worked for different companies up in Boston. I worked for a, a company that um, covered six states and we provided nursing and hospital staffing. So I totally, I get this. I feel for all these nurses we used to work with and employ. I feel for all the administrators that used to be our customers. And um, despite what we're hearing, the, there's not a lot of, I don't want to say this. I want to say this tactfully. Um, there's, a, there's information that is not being completely, the, the, the degree of information we're getting from our government is not being completely forthright. And so I listen to the boots on the ground, the folks that are living through this on the day-to-day -day basis. And I think we have um, something that really is eye-opening for us as a healthcare system. And um, so Detroit being a potentially new epicenter two days ago, um, there, there are multiple hospital uh, group in their, their health system. Two of their hospitals two days ago reached max ICU capacity. Um, and so they're like, they're trying to figure out how are we going to bring people in? You know, there's basically a surge of cases. Now we are identifying, you know, they're getting more testing and these results are positive. And it just really strains healthcare systems and hospitals, facilities, and doctors. So this healthcare system, it's the Henry Ford healthcare system, obviously Henry Ford up in Detroit. Um, they put out yesterday, and some of you may or may not have heard this. I, I know it's going to be a big deal. You're going to be hearing about this. I guarantee you they're not the only healthcare system who's going to be putting this out. But they put out a letter. It's a real essential minimal memo, and it is their life and death protocols. Like, can you believe we're in this situation? So essentially, I highlighted some of the things. It says, to our patients, families, and community, it says, please know we care deeply about you and your family's health, and we're doing the best to protect and serve you and our community. Um, they say, we currently have a public health emergency that is making our supply of some medical resources hard to find, i.e. protective wear for the providers of care, um, which we're already seeing, like in Boston, 150 doctors have the virus. So they said, because of shortages, we will need to be careful with resources. I highlighted patients who have the best chance of getting better are our first priority. Patients will be evaluated for the best plan of care 
and dying patients will be provided comfort care. Okay, so just read that as hospice and morphine. They're going to be drugged out of their minds. Um, so they basically went through four points. What does this mean to you and your family? One, it says alert staff during triage or any current medical conditions. If you have a DNR, a do not attempt to resuscitate, which means if you flatline you code, they're not going to revive you. Um, and by the way, if you don't have those um, and you want to have those, now's the time to get all these things in place. Um, two, if you or a family member becomes ill and your medical doctor believes that you need extra care in an ICU, a mechanical ventilation, that's breathing machine, you will be assessed for eligibility based only on your specific condition. So now they are, um, this is what we call care rationing. So they are going to be evaluating care levels based on uh, eligibility. I see somebody, Kim says euthanasia. So read that how you want, but it is pretty darn scary. Okay, number three, some patients will be extremely sick and very unlikely to survive their illness, even with critical treatment. Treating these patients would take away resources for patients who might survive. Going back up to the patients who have the best chance of getting better are our first priority. So let's think about the extremely sick, okay? They go further into this. Number four, patients who are not eligible. Okay, so these, these are charted, identified cases who are not eligible. Um, for ICU or ventilator care, will receive treatment for pain control and comfort measures, i.e. hospice and morphine. Some conditions that are likely to make you not eligible include severe heart, lung, kidney and, and or liver failure. So let's talk about like severe heart failure. If you have heart disease, you have congestive heart failure, you have valve replacements, bypass surgeries, heart disease in different stages, that puts you at risk. If you have COPD, uh, emphysema, maybe your lungs have been radiated and it puts you in a lung disease category or a lung failure, you're potentially uh, not eligible to be on a ventilator. Same with kidney. Now, there's the golden triangle, the heart, the lung, and the kidneys. I talk about this a lot. Um, so if you've ever had a family member who's had, you know, heart disease or kidney failure, you know, in stage, there's this golden triangle. A lot of times they'll have pneumonia that affects the lungs. There's usually fluid around the heart. They start to have the organ failure, sepsis sets, and all, all sorts of things. Well, kidney disease, there are a lot of people who are in dialysis or have some degree of renal disease and renal is kidney. Diabetes, diabetics fall into that category. And you know, if there are controlled diabetics, that might be different, but it is very disturbing. So um, Anita says, I'm six years old. They will leave me in the corner to perish. Uh, Pat says, completely understand Anita. Um, it's very, very crazy. Uh, Krista says we need to follow China and build more hospitals fast. I actually, there was a really good interview last night on, um, we're huge fans of Rachel Maddow in her house. I just love, she's so like scientific in terms of her factual oriented information An awesome interviewer. Um, she brought in the, uh, general that's in charge of the, uh, army Corps of engineers. They're actually doing that. So he like, he, we're in good hands with him. Um, and he's just like, we're, they're not, he didn't say they were in triage mode, but they're like, I think they have 38 states that have requested stuff. And like, they're just running down the, the stuff. Um, okay. So, um, all right. Here's some other, so that's just one category of patients that would put you ineligible for a ventilator. Number two, terminal cancers. Well, that's really broad. Um, you know, so that I just, I can't touch that. And then three, severe trauma or burns. So um, <clears throat> let's say you have a car accident, severe trauma, you're in a car accident. Does that qualify as a severe trauma and you're no longer eligible? I mean, it's just kind of crazy. So 
this, this is the beginning. Okay. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but I want you to know what we're dealing with. We're dealing with, um, <clears throat> comfort care for folks that don't find uh, themselves, their health conditions in an eligibility factor. And we are definitely finding, uh, ourselves, uh, in a situation with these over, overly overwhelmed, under uh, staffed, under PPE equipped, so that's a uh, protective uh, wear, personal protective equipment. They're poorly, there's just, it's just crazy. Like the front line literally is going to be having to make these life and death decisions. And the first hospital that put out the life and death protocol. Uh, is not the only one. <clears throat> I'm sure there's been discussions, but they have literally written it in ink. Um, so that's Henry Ford up in Detroit. So um, that really, like that, it's very, it's bothering me today. And why it's bothering me today, the kind of list here at the bottom, I, I mean, you guys can see, like, this is so insane. So this list here, this is a lot of, these are a lot of our followers. This, these are a lot of my patients. Uh, you know, you guys are my family, my community, and I want to take care of you. So my goal is to talk about inflammation because the root of a lot of these challenges is inflammation. So if we turn things around and we look at, okay, how can we lower our risk factors? How can we minimize potentially like what, what will deem eligibility will be blood work and labs and, and, and a full body evaluation. So some of the things that they're going to be evaluating are going to be C-reactive protein levels and antibody, the ANAs, the inflammatory markers in the body. So one of the things that we have to assess is how can we lower those? Those are all biomarkers for inflammatory conditions and inflammatory levels in the cells of our body. They are this heart, you know, in our heart cells, they're in our soft tissue cells, they're in our joint, our muscle. They are in the organs that are, uh, the body's attacking the immune response, the autoimmunity. So MS, RA, um, lupus, fibromyalgia, even Parkinson's, candidates that have diabetes and other, uh, you know, we say age relating, but it really is an oxidative stress related uh, disease. So it's a progression of high oxidant level or high free radical damage, um, cellular aging. That is what could put you in a non eligible, you know, where you are deemed not eligible for a ventilator. So I'm all about what can we do and what can we control? Well, this is what I'm going to tell you. Inflammation levels can be controlled. And actually we can do some pretty amazing, powerful things at supporting your oxidative levels, um, and that is minimizing the oxidative stress, supporting the reduction of free radical damage. Um, and this has a bigger role to play. This can help you lower your cholesterol levels. It helps you get control of your diabetes. It helps you minimize your insulin resistance, your glucose intolerance. Um, so one of the things that I really want us to think about is really, really focusing in on all that we can control. So, you know, inflammatory conditions lead to potentially putting any of us, and, and this is regardless of our age. So I know we've got some viewers on YouTube, you're over the age of 60. Well, guess what? There are 30 year olds that are, are not healthy in terms of, uh, they have high inflammatory levels. So that's not a judgment. That's a reality. And that's why we're seeing a 38 year old, 35 year old, why we're seeing a 17 year old have um, a, a negative impact from this virus. So um, just on a positive note, um, before we dig into, because I have four key points, four ways to reduce the root of inflammation in our bodies. Okay, so we're going to be positive in this. I just want to give you a big, big um, uh, focal point here. Um, but the, the good news is like the state of Massachusetts. So Boston has, I think now it's 160 doctors that have been tested positive. They can't be on the front lines. They potentially, like we saw it at uh, Mount Sinai in New York, the nurse manager who was working with all these patients, he died. Uh, it's insane. So Massachusetts state has released all of their four-year med students. They've graduated them early and they've put them on the front lines. Um, and we're starting to see that 
And the military is calling up retired professionals. We're seeing, I think, California, there's one uh, school that has um, asked um, their uh, students, like you can early graduate. I think it was like 69% signed up. So, um, you know, we are definitely getting a front line. Uh, there's more coming to the front line to relieve these individuals, but it doesn't change the fact that now they've got life and death protocols and they take an oath to do no harm. I feel for these folks, my empathic kind of sense is they are going to need a lot of mental health support. They are going to need a lot of encouragement. They are going to need to um, really, really be supported because the, this is unprecedented it's unprecedented times for the doctors and the nurses. Do we have any nurses or doctors watching today? I'm curious to kind of get their their ta- their thoughts on this. Um, so um, so that's that's where we're at. So severe heart disease, super sick. You know, I had a big question mark. Like, what is? I, I, they didn't say super sick. They said it's extremely sick. So my thing was, what's the question mark? Like, who is in that category? And I just wrote down inflamed bodies because we know the root of inflammation is the root of all disease. So let's reduce our inflammatory levels. So I wanna take you through some things that we can employ to reduce our inflammatory levels. YouTube, I've got a link. Um, I actually pulled a a favorites list. So if you do go into my full script store, um, there are individual links posted for each of some of the items I'm recommending that are highly potent. These are gonna be very professional grade level products that most of the time you can't buy them off of Amazon. And if you can, they're not certified resellers. So I'd question the uh, quality of it in terms of expiration date and how it was housed. But all of these are right off the manufacturing lines. Um, And they're all in stock, I checked, (laughs) because we've had some issues with some of our immune boosting stuff. But at the end of the day, we reduce our inflammation levels. You actually support your immune system. You minimize, like yesterday's video, we talked about the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is very much a part of moving your inflammation, the excess of inflammation, the cellular debris of inflammation. So we can support our immune system by lowering our inflammation levels. The first step to do that is to look at increasing your antioxidants. This can be through food, you know, and anything that is color rich, like berries, dark purple, reds, you know, raspberries, strawberries, you know, oranges and yellows are really great because they have certain properties in them that reduce the inflammation levels. Ginger, turmeric, we talked about that yesterday. Greens, dark green leafy vegetables, white vegetables, purple vegetables. So um, that is one way. Food is definitely one way. Now, there are points where we have to take it even higher. So I'm all about food as with my nutrition background. But when we're talking about cellular related inflammation, we have to go deeper. We've got to really dive in to reduce the inflammation levels from a cellular perspective. So there are a series of antioxidants that I have a lot of uh, experience with that I know categorically will change the state of not just your inflammation levels, but in many cases change the health of those organs that might fall on this category hearts, lungs, kidneys, livers. So number one, my first favorite powerful antioxidant is CoQ10 in the form of ubiquinol. So there's ubiquinone, ubiquinol, ubiquinol, N-O-L. It is the most bioavailable form of this powerhouse antioxidant. It was discovered in the 1970s by Japanese. They, when I lived over there for a year, they use CoQ10 to treat heart disease and they reverse it. I have clinically had more more than I can count. And I should have put this together as like a research paper. Um, I have had heart patients, like folks that have 90% clogging and they've had heart damage, literally identified heart damage um, from heart, heart disease and heart attacks. CoQ10 dosing has not only repaired the damage, it literally, in some cases, it's when they have, you know, they've been in the delay, like getting ready, like sometimes, sometimes they're so ill that they have to get ready for surgery. And I come in to play in all these different areas, food, nutrition, exercise, just really full body work. 
we've been able to use CoQ10, the body creates a new bypass. It literally creates its own valve system. And that we've, I've, we've, we've got that identified. That is not an unknown in our world, but we're not using it as we should. And especially anybody who is in that risk factor with, you know, super, super high blood pressure, heart disease, um, it, the CoQ10, that actual compound, we find it in its greatest abundance in the heart cells and gums. So gum disease can reverse with CoQ10. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, so I, I really love CoQ10. Plus the most potent version of CoQ10 is when we couple it up with PQQ. And that is this amazing powerhouse antioxidant. Those two work synergistically and they are very, very powerful at balancing the inflammation levels. So I put that out there because there, the, the next kind of series of, of recommendations are some herbals, uh, but CoQ10, it's, it's a game changer. If you or anybody in your life has, has heart disease um, or heart damage and, you know, you're nervous about having a viral invasion and being, you know, a, having this be compared to you, your lab tests. Uh, we need to, we need to go full on into CoQ10 dosing. It's all over the road. A lot of times you're going to find like a hundred milligrams up to 400. Um, I personally take three to 400. Now I'm taking a lot more because I just really, uh, I've, I, I was doing a lot of antioxidant kind of addressing and, 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 and anti-inflammatory related stuff pre-wedding and I've just increased it. I really feel like it does, it helps the skin. So, I mean, like there's some superficial benefits of CoQ10, like it keeps us healthy. It reduces the free radical damage. Um, it's like a, they call it the elixir of life. And I've been taking CoQ10 since I read my first book about natural medicine. It's, it is game changing. Um, so I put that out there cause that's super potent. The next two, I talked a little bit about yesterday. Yesterday, our the video sponsor, Moringa. I've got another link so you can grab them. Um, they, they're they locked and loaded. So grab that link down below. Um, Moringa and Chaga, those are the highest antioxidants that are natural, natural plants, naturally occurring. Like CoQ10 is not a natural compound, but we it's synthesized. It's not unhealthy, but it is something that is, is not in natural form. So the uh, chaga and moringa have the highest auric value, the highest antioxidant level. And it's very potent at reducing inflammation levels, particularly the there's an enzyme, it's, it's labeled COX-2. So COX-2 is an enzyme that actually gets turned on or triggered through stress, trauma, diet, a whole assortment of things like uh, mineral deficiencies and, and just a poorly functioning system. Um, they, we see higher levels of this COX-2 in our um, endothelial cells. We see this in fibrins. We see this in tissue that becomes harmful. Like fibrins can be blood clots. Um, and it, that enzyme actually promotes and increases pain, the pain experience and the inflammatory state. So let me take a quick break here. I'm gonna take a quick little swig of my uh, bone broth, but mo I wanna recommend, please give me a thumbs up. I see we've got 177 people on. I'd love to see over hundred thumbs up. If you're enjoying this, give me a thumbs up, let me know. And Anita, oh, thank you. I actually, we're trying to work on that. It's just, I don't have as much time as I used to, like now with Gabriel and he's, he's having a hard time with this transition. He misses his teachers. So I'm spending a lot of time kind of helping him being outside, uh, but thank you. So, um, okay, so let me take a quick little swig. So thanks Instagram and YouTube, you can share this and put that out there. So other people see it on, you know, Instagram and um, Instagram and Facebook. So thank you. Um, okay, so Chaga and Moringa are great. The next step is quercetin. We find this in great abundance in turmeric. So it will be like, you can't really see it, but like in the bottom of this, it's a little orange, but I have turmeric in my uh, bone broth and turmeric, and there's a little pepper. Turmeric has quercetin. Quercetin is a great antioxidant. 
It is an anti-inflammatory, very, very powerful. And then next up, there are a few others that might be, might not be so prevalent, or you might, most of the time you wouldn't be taking them individually. They come packaged in products like uh, Inflamex, um, the advanced inflammatory support. These are products that I have in my clinic. So I'll post those down below. Oh, thanks, Pam and Diana. I got lots of thumbs up. I appreciate it. Um, Boswellia amla. Those are two powerful uh, botanicals that are anti-inflammatory. And I put together my top anti-inflammatory products in YouTube that it's in the description box below. So you can grab those. Those obviously, oh, let's see. I'm losing my internet. Hopefully my internet's okay here. Um, let, me, let me move Instagram a little closer. Let's see. Hmm. You may lose Instagram. I don't know. I, we were having really, really slow connection yesterday, which adds to the fact that I'm not able to get as much as I used to be able to. Okay. So those are antioxidants. Obviously the most powerful one um, that you you can add and just have magical results is CoQ10 in high doses. Um, oh, thanks, Anita. Anita gave us a $9.99 super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and she's kind of our, I actually, Anita, I found out I need you to email me your, um, and I'll, I'll type in my email. Email me your email and I can add you on as a moderator here. That's apparently the way to do it. Um, I'm just typing my email. So you can email me there, Anita. And then I will include you and then you can moderate uh, when you're on the live. So, okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for everything that you're doing. Next up, um, counter to what a lot of people think, the homeopathy can certain types of homeopathics can be very, very powerful and potent collectively or just kind of individually can be very potent in um, supporting lowered inflammatory levels. My favorite, and I talk about this a lot as a lymphatic therapist and doing post-surgical work. I love Arnica Montana. It is a uh, powerful, hey, Instagram, Instagram's back. Instagram, I don't know what happened, but my internet's a little wonky. So we're talking about homeopathy um, as no, the second uh, really powerful antioxidant or inflammatory uh, reducing uh, element that we use as naturopaths. So homeopathy like Arnica Montana is one of my favorites. Um, I like to use topically Arnica Montana, especially for like RA, lupus, fibromyalgia, a lot of the kind of joint related pain. It's it's often billed as a pain reliever. It does a whole lot more. Like it definitely has a significant lymph motivating aspect on there. Um, and then the other one that I like is Arsenicum album. And then there's another one, uh, the Brionia. I like that as well. Most of them you're going to find in combination. I posted two homeopathics. Um, actually, I think I posted three. The anti-inflammatory drops those are the ones that if you are dealing with any high, like let's say you see a rheumatologist or your cardiologist ran your C-reactive protein levels and they're really high or not at a lower level or normal level, those drops plus CoQ10 and some of these other measures could very well be impactful at reducing those to a level where your doctor might not even be prescribing medicine. And the most common kind of inflammatory related medicine that gets prescribed is something called Celebrex. So I see a lot of my autoimmune patients who, you know, are working with a rheumatologist, that tends to be what they get recommended. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of side effects with those. The good news is with a lot of these, they're food oriented, they're botanical in their orientation. There's a lot of clinical research with inflammation and all of these. So I will items that for sure have solid substantial clinical backing and clinical research, clinical data, not just in rats, but in humans, uh, human specimen. And we've been able to see tissue changes and the reduction of that enzyme, the COX-2 enzyme. And that's really what we want to address is the COX-2 enzyme, which leads me to the third component and enzymes certain enzymes, systemic enzymes, not digestive enzymes. We have all different types of enzymes in our body. And most of the time we kind of think, oh, I need digestive enzymes and that's kind of the end all be all. 
Digestive enzymes, all they do is just help us digest food. There are other enzymes. There are um, what we call proteolytic, systemic enzymes, metabolic enzymes. We have enzymes that get, uh, they're, they're like switches. They will turn like for, for women, if we have high um, stress and we have cortisol, there's an enzyme that will literally convert. It switches your estrogen or your progesterone. Mostly it's progesterone. Uh, it converts it. Well, actually both uh, estrogen, progesterone, it can get converted to testosterone through an enzyme. So enzymes are very powerful. They're switches. So a lot of times they're like, you know, on train tracks, like Gabriel's got a train track. We have like a divider. The enzymes will send you one way or another way. And so we want all our enzymes to be sending our little train tracks and, and cells all in the way of health and lowered inflammation. So I want to talk a little bit about... Um, something called DO, diamine oxidase. It is a particular enzyme that is extremely potent for folks who have extreme histamine responses. So yesterday we planted more peonies. I'm transplanting and moving all my plants around. It's probably the best thing for my budget. I'm just making more butterfly and um, um, hummingbird plants, just re removing them around. <laughs> My lemon balm is on fire, so I'm going to have tons of lemon balm bushes. Um, but I was out, and our neighbor had the yard guy. Um, he came and mowed, and there was like this huge yellow plume of ugh, pollen. It was everywhere. The car is covered. Everything is covered. So that triggers my histamine response. Well, how we reduce histamine is to use DO, and then obviously some of these other antioxidants, to decrease that, that, um, that response. And I, I really love this for my patients that have some uh, really, it's not unique, but you're going to probably, you may or may not have heard of it, but there's uh, conditions like POTS, um, and mast cell disease. I work with those patients, um, because there's a lymphatic involvement. There's often central uh, nervous system imbalances, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, there's like hardwiring disconnect. And those are some of my really, really um, very impactful patients that I work with when I put them on these different protocols. So enzymes we can use in the body to actually um, reduce the inflammatory state. And the fibrins that I talked about that we also will see that's uh, kind of a byproduct or uh, coincides with the COX-2 enzyme, those can be addressed by other enzymes. So I, I put some, um, some of my products and recommend down below. Um, but I really, really love, um, uh, one is interface and, um, the other, I have another one that's, uh, Sarah peptase is another one. And I have one brand that I'm going to, um, I just have to edit. I've got a lot of video editing to do. It takes a lot of time. Um, but I have another video that I'm going to post that really digs into the pain relieving impact of certain enzymes. And that pain relieving impact comes directly from lowering the inflammation level and it addressing the decrease of the COX-2 enzymes. So certain enzymes can lower and reduce other enzymes uh, that are in, in the, in the body. So in the description box, I do have all of those items already queued up for you. So you can click on those. And then when you get into, um, when you get into my full script store, I actually created a list and it's called anti-inflammatories. And so I just, it's, it's my favorite. So you can shop my favorites and they're all in there. Um, it doesn't let you like buy all of them, but you have to like click on each one. You can add them to your cart. Um, but I know we we're still operational. We're still shipping out from the two warehouses. Um, I actually mentioned quercetin already in the um, botanical antioxidants. And you can watch that on the replay for any of you guys who, who uh, missed that. Um, let's see, Dorothy, is that like die offs or an allergic reaction? Um, like the mast cell disease and POTS, that's, it's, it's totally separate, but Lyme disease definitely falls in the category where there will be a histamine response. So it's not uncommon for me to have somebody that when they fill out their intake form in the clinic, 
they've got a litany of, of diseases that they're like, yep, got this. And they write down all these things and then they bring in their separate sheets of medications and supplements. Um, so that's really, really big. Um, okay. Shangri-La 333. I have RA and take Celebrex. Can I take CoQ10 and Arnica with Celebrex? Yeah. So Arnica in the homeopathic form is totally fine. Um, CoQ10, I would just ask your pharmacist. I am not familiar with, again, I'm not a pharmacist. Um, I do know patients take it. I just don't know if it's one of those things receptor wise that you want to separate the time of when you're taking it from your Celebrex. It kind of depends. So I don't know that answer. Um, let's see. Um, okay. You guys are so great. Thank you. Um, and tea relief gel or tea relief tabs. That's another homeopathic that I'll use. Um, and that has the Arnica. So a lot of times I'll just pair up botanicals with homeopathics with enzymes. And that that's a very strong pairing, which leads me to number four, which we're all dealing with stress. <laughs> Stress. stress is the root of a lot of, lot of inflammation. And there are chemicals that get released by our body when we're in a stress state. And the main chemical that tends to be the most toxic stress hormone is called cortisol. And you probably hear me talk a lot about them if you are a regular viewer of mine. I'm always mentioning cortisol, testing cortisol. I have test kits available or the labs are still running for us, even though they're up in Washington. Actually, they're in Oregon, um, but they're still running the tests. What we see is that cortisol is really the beginning of a lot of inflammation within the body. And over time, the cortisol causes cellular damage. It causes vascular damage, vascular inflammation. That tends to be the reason why your liver produces uh, cholesterol to go and, you know, one cholesterol, um, LDL is like the Band-Aid. HDL removes the Band-Aid. So your cholesterol levels can tell us a little bit about the inflammatory levels within the body. So again, we go back to who's on the list who might not be eligible for getting a ventilator in this life and death protocol now we have in, in hospitals. If you've got liver disease, sclerosis of the liver, more than likely you have high cholesterol. And sometimes that cholesterol can be a factor, not only just because of oxidative stress on the body, but also because of cortisol. Cortisol can turn a normal functional liver into a, 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 a situation of sclerosis of the liver, a fatty liver. Fatty liver is totally on this list. You know, depending on like they, they, what they're going to do is they're going to pull labs. They're going to pull the in inflammatory markers. They're going to be assessing enzymes, liver enzymes, AST, ALT. Those are two common liver enzymes that we see on CBC panels. They're going to run those. And that is very alarming because if you have, and, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of people don't even realize, you know, you know, on the younger side, a lot of people don't go to the doctor that often. And if they do, you know, it kind of depends on what labs are being run. And so I, I'm not surprised that people in their 20s and 30s um, are, are having such a huge impact from the virus and completely unaware that maybe they're just totally stressed out. Their cortisol levels are all way over, you know, all over the road. And that's compromised the, the liver. Um, so, you know, that that's a huge element we need to consider when we're looking at, okay, how can we improve our value? So if we go in, we're qualified and, and, and able to be eligible. You know, we haven't even gotten to that point where what if everybody's eligible? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like a whole other zone and we'll probably be there the way our, our cases are tracking up. So, you know, I want anybody who feels concerned. I mean, Brian, Brian, he, uh, you know, he's, he's taken this all in. He's very much a thinker. Um, I just get really angry and vocal <laughs> and I do. So like I dive into work cause that's my kind of outlet. Um, but he, you know, let yesterday as we were learning about this, um, this, you know, life and death protocol that, uh, the, um, what is it? The Henry Ford healthcare system put out. 
he was like, well, you know, what do we do if we have to go to the hospital? I mean, he has a condition that it, it's under control. Um, and he's had it since he was younger, but his body attacks his platelet levels. And then his platelets go, they go for a dive. It could be life-threatening. And he has had a few situations where he's been in, not ICU, but he's been in the hospital. And he's like, what happens if something happens to us? And, and literally, like, he started going through this process. Like, well, what if I get it? And like, well, then you might have it. And then what happens with Gamer? I'm like, oh my gosh, that is, these are conversations many of us are going to be having and comment down below. Like if you guys are having these conversations, um, so let I'm, you know, just let me know. Um, we're not the only ones. <laughs> so, um, Anita said non-alcoholic fatty liver is common. It totally is. And a big part of it is, um, from stress, um, and also we have an overwhelmingly, um, toxic environment in our world. And so limiting your toxic burden, you know, limiting alcohol, limiting chemicals in our skincare, our homes, um, our cleaning, you know, that is something I feel like I want to address as well, because a lot of us are, you know, using potentially industrial grade cleaners because we're all freaked out and we're cleaning everything. Um, and that, that is, that's a big factor. Um, so I definitely, I, I want to put that out there in terms of us addressing the, the underlying cause of inflammation is, is cortisol. So our stress, our stress management becomes really key. There are compounds and I, I posted on YouTube in the description box for all of you who, by the way, let's take a quick minute. Give me a thumbs up, hit the little thumbs up button. We're at 78 likes and share. I appreciate all of this. And for all of you tuning in, I know your time is valuable. And I promise today we're going to be at, at, at an hour or just under um, so that you guys can go on with your Fridays. Um, but I, I've posted some of the products that I recommend. Now, the best way and most um, accurate way to address stress is one, employ stress relieving methodologies and practices at home. Meditation, you know, mindfulness, um, gratitude, stress relieving exercises that are healthy, walking, exercising, getting better sleep. And so I posted my little REM. Um, I grabbed one of my last packets last night in here from my, myself, but um, I actually have it, I think right there. But the little REM sleep that has a whole bunch of aspects in it, but it has compounds that help lower cortisol. So if we sleep better, and we sleep longer, fully, and thoroughly, really good deep sleep, it, it's rejuvenating to the, the, the adrenal glands and it helps support our body. So sleeping is important, meditation, yoga, exercising, getting out in nature, grounding, those are all powerful practices. Um, intimacy with others is also something that is very stress relieving. And then going into compounds. So there are some like my cortisol stress reset, um, the cortisol balancer, those all have compounds and certain neurotransmitter amino acids, as well as other compounds that actually block. Like I have some that will block the enzyme of, of what is making the, the production. It blocks the production of cortisol. So it kind of depends on the testing. I always say, identify your tests. Um, but I also know we're in a pinch. And so any of those practices that you can employ and supportive also, I didn't post this, but I promise I will, um, B, your B complex, um, B vitamins, particularly like this liposomal B, um, is super powerful at balancing your stress levels. We burn through vitamin C and B when we're stressed. And incidentally, New York, I think three days ago, two days ago, you know, they're, they're, New York's the front line. And so, you know, they are, they're the, the major epicenter. I think they hit over what, 37, I might even be 40,000 um, cases, but they, they are employing vitamin C uh, dosing and the Chinese did this. I mean, the other thing too, we have, luckily have from China is that they employ Chinese medicine and Chinese medical practices in the traditional, you know, in the conventional medicine world. And they are, they started doing that in New York. That's a very positive thing, but we can employ that at home, you know, getting citrus fruits and uh, kiwi and eating your greens and also taking supplementation and making sure 
your sleeping better are all going to be extremely helpful. So I know again, stress and cortisol is the root of a lot of inflammatory conditions within the body. And at the end of the day, if we are addressing, you know, doctors and healthcare systems having a life and death protocol, we know what will deem your eligibility are going to be lab tests and lab tests specifically related to your uh, inflammatory levels, C-reactive protein. Um, they're going to run some of the rheumatology related uh, uh, evaluation or uh, labs. You know, if you have pre-existing conditions, they're going to be addressing those. They're going to look at your liver enzymes. They're going to, you know, assess the functionality of your pancreas with the diabetics. So I am a Felicia Butts says, what about the vitamin C packs? Yes, I love those. I think, you know, at any point now, if you're consuming water as a liquid, you should be enhancing it with nutrition just across the board. Like every water component that, you know, every liquid that might not be like a bone broth or green juice, you should enhance with a lot of the, um, packets of antioxidants and you know, minerals and vitamins just to be constantly delivering your body a lot of powerful nutrients. Um, okay. So Raquel, let's see. So being single is hard right now. I'm sorry. Uh, but you are totally not alone. And the good news is the internet and digital, you, we can stay connected. Um, I definitely recommend you video chat as much as you can with friends and family uh, video chat, happy hours, green juice, you know, hours, whatever tea, you know, definitely take time to connect with people. So you don't feel alone. Um, and I'm happy you're here because you have 161. And, and I think we're at seven over on Instagram. You're not alone. Um, okay, so Becky, the link is actually over on Instagram on YouTube. So YouTube is the only place where I can post a description box. I don't have that capacity. Um, but what I will do, I'll shoot um, a quick little IGTV highlighting all four of these items and I'll post those in Instagram. That'll go on my feed. So that'll be my workaround. Instagram makes us work a little bit harder <laughs> for this social media um, aspect. Um, okay. So anti-stress technique, I use laughter yesterday. Yes. Deb KS. Yeah, totally. So laughter, I actually think it's great to um, watch more comedies. And I have to tell you who I'm really loving and makes me laugh all the time is Jimmy Fallon. He's such a great guy. Like he's so funny and he is doing, his wife is his cameraman, a camera woman, and he's shooting from home. He has his daughters, like it's really cute. Every time he, you know, shows the, like his daughter makes, does his logo every time. It's really cute but he's really funny. And like his little monogram, his, you know, um, monologue, it's him and his wife. And so he's got like a little synthesizer that laughs and it just, it's very funny. But any way that you can watch things that are comedic, she's totally right. Laughter is really a powerful, powerful medicine. Um, I love it. So, um, yeah. And we have such a great community. I'm so grateful for all of you, Pat and Dorothy. Um, uh, let's see. Angela says, I'm a big supporter of art making handcrafts to lower stress. I'm an art therapist music too. Oh my gosh, totally. You know, um, I love as an adult, the, um, adult coloring mandalas. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. It was really big. I want to say like seven or, you know, it kind of kicked off like eight to 10 years ago, but I have always, even in college, I always had a coloring book and a little thing of crayons. And like when things would get really stressful, I know even when I was working and, and juggling the master's and doctorate program, I would just color and like it allows your brain to zone out and it just, it's like a pause button. I, I really feel like that. So I'm curious, Angela, is that pretty accurate in terms of the impact on the brain? And she has a really good point. I really love this too. The bi, uh, binaural, I, am I saying that right? Binaural beat programs. Um, they're actually, I listened to some on YouTube. You actually have to wear headphones and it will send different sounds to different parts of the year. And it, it, it triggers certain brain functions, but it's also really powerful. Um, emergency mandalas are very soothing and coloring. Yeah, definitely. Art complements the intellectual brain. Love it. Love it. Gabriel actually tell you what he is like, go, go, go all the time. He's got like my energy level and he, 
he will sit still for an hour to do art. Like he gets in the zone. So today I bought a whole bunch of stuff from Joanne's and Michael's, by the way, parents, Joanne's and Michael's, you can order pretty much everything you need, art supplies and stuff like that. Because I, I don't really run a classroom at home. And I'm like, we need stuff. And so I bought a whole bunch of stuff, easel, like paper replacement that we've run out of and tons of ink and, and our um, paint. They had all these coupons. I could apply the same kind of coupons that I do in store. And I even got stuff um, to decorate for Easter. So that's what we're going to do. Um, gardening, I will say as a gardener, gardening is very therapeutic. Um, being outside, being digging, giving life to something else. Um, you know, those are all really good ways to improve um, the stress that you're feeling. So, and definitely detaching, disconnecting from the media, disconnecting from, you know, some of the things that can trigger us um, and cause us stress, I think is most important. So tomorrow I am, um, I'm thinking about doing one mostly for like parents, but I think it'll be effective for adults as well. But I'm, I just want to deal, I want to address like coping mechanisms, like stress coping um, and some tips or some protocols and, and kind of um, uh, not theories, but kind of practices that I'm going to uh, kind of describe. So tomorrow, Saturday, we're going to go live at nine again. Um, and um, I'm really, I'm on, I'm very honored. I'm excited by how many of you participate and I love the community. We have such an international community. And I definitely want to give big thanks to Anita for the super chat, $9.99. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, I, from behind the scenes, I'm going to be shooting more video. Actually, today, I've got more time to actually do that. So Brian schedules a lighter schedule that allows me to get some work done. So do expect a video out today. Uh, my Moringa video, where I really go into the details, is coming out later today. And then um, I also, um, I am working on, I have a lymphatic video I'm, I'm editing. And for our live show, particularly here on YouTube, um, I'm going to be trying to gather more sponsors um, so that they just support the channel. Uh, you know, just like all of you, my schedule has changed quite a bit, not being able to see patients and then also being so limited with Gabriel Home. Um, I just can't close the door and work. I have four-year-olds. Mine particularly is not independent that way. Uh, so he's a total only child and he's 100% attention, which is awesome. And I'm grateful I'm in this position to do that. So you'll be seeing some little tweaks. It doesn't affect you anything in any way. Um, it just allows me to keep doing this. Um, so that I appreciate. Oh, so Shannon, I'm drinking bone broth. Um, and, uh, oh, I'm really bummed. So speaking of bone breath today, I've got refills of bone breath coming. I'm hoping they're there. Instacart is fully unavailable in our area. At least yesterday I went to log in cause Brian's like, I want to do something on the grill. And I didn't pre-plan that in my Instacart orders earlier in the week. And then they were like, there's no times available. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, what are we going to do? So um, I looked this morning, they are back on, but there's definitely more ordering online. Um, but I will tell you a kind of sneaky thing I realized. Um, there are some things he loves. He always, we always get at Target. And um, so I ordered that. I ordered some Easter stuff for Gabriel because that's the other thing is apparently like I can't go Easter shopping now. So Easter Bunny is going to come and we need stuff. And so although I do stock up pretty much every after uh, season and I get all the sales, but at any rate, I'm just telling you um, target has a connection where like, if you have a red card, you can buy your items online. It's free shipping. So you can choose to like ship your items. Then they have a connection with shipped, which is the local delivery. And uh, so he's like, I want to do something on the egg. And so I was like, well, maybe I'll get like a, a turkey, you know, like a, a organic turkey. I mean, odds are probably wouldn't have that available at Target. Well, it allowed me to qualify for the shipped. And then I added some of the things he's running low on to that order. And shipped came within like, I'm not, I'm not joking. From the time I placed the order to them sh shopping, and apparently she dropped off a few other orders, to getting our order, it was like three and a half, four hours. So that was all Target.com. I got to use my red card. By the way, they're doing 25% off toys. So for any of you who have kids or grandkids, 
you could ship them a toy 25% off and you just click on the little 25% off cartwheel and I got a discounted toy already. And then I, um, like they have clearance. I did clearance and it added it to the clearance item. So he's going to have really fun toys. Um, so anyway, yeah, so that's where we're at. Uh, Instagram is going to be uh, moving off. Um, already have a poor connection. Gosh darn it. Our internet stinks. So anyway, so friends stay tuned. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to talk about coping mechanisms and Instagram just came just went off. So I saved that. Um, so all the links down below, I think most of them, I think pretty much all of them, they are all, they all go to my full script, um, professional grade store. So that does support our channel. It supports our, our efforts here. So, you know, many of them are only professional grade, so you won't be able to find those on Amazon, but all you have to do is get logged in. It's 10% off everything like automatic 10% off. And I've been told that we might be doing a spring sale sometime coming up. Like it seems like every quarter or every six months they do some sort of like 20 or 25% off. So um, once you're in the full script email, you know, with your name and email, you're a customer, customer of mine, um, they will send out a notice when that happens. So um, I'm not always tuned in to them as I should be. Um, but okay. So Lorraine from Miami, Dr. M, what is the enzyme that, which can switch estrogen or progesterone into testosterone on low. Um, okay, so it, it isn't something that you use to turn those on. What I was mentioning is that cortisol actually triggers a particular type of enzyme and your body actually steals, converts progesterone and, and testo progesterone and estrogen into testosterone in the female body. We block that by using other enzymes and even compounds but there's no sort of magic enzyme that all of a sudden starts, you know, switching the other way. We don't have that yet. Um, oh, Angela says, you can also buy yourself basic art supplies through Target. Yes, love Target. And uh, this is not an advertisement. I love, I love Target and Michael's. Michael's is my favorite, but I tell you what, Joanne's came through for us. So we've got all sorts of painting and we got this little, and from Target, we got this, um, it's actually, I think he brought it in here. We're just trying to get him to do it, but he wasn't interested yesterday. But we have this like bigger bunny and it's just brown. It's like brown mache. And then we're going to paint it and decorate it. So I've got pom poms. I've got all this stuff that uh, we're turning <laughs> his little toy room into like an art project. So super excited. Wish me luck. Uh, it's going to be crazy. And I will probably post pictures on Instagram. So behind the scenes stuff I'm posting on Instagram. So friends, thanks for tuning in. It's been an hour a pleasure time with you. I hope you guys have a wonderful, awesome day. Stay positive and just know there are ways to minimize your inflammation levels in your body to help give you better lab results in the need that you, in the event that you need to, to qualify. I mean, it's just crazy to say that, but you know, in the event we, we are seeing care rationing and it's only just starting. So stay healthy, stay well stay inside, stay home. I mean, not stay inside, but stay home, be safe, social distance, order online when you can and tune in tomorrow at nine. All right, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. And oh, by the way, quick reminder, give me a thumbs up on this video. And when this wraps, if you could go, go back on to the regular video and comment uh, and just let me know which of these has been inspiring or if you know, you're going to try any of these, that totally helps the algorithm. Um, I've been pretty much appealing all of the demonetization and the censoring. I've won some cases. I've lost a few others, but just keep, keep commenting because it actually helps. There's a threshold that we have to hit with views for me to do that. So anyway, thanks everybody. Bye Diana and Fran and Elizabeth and Taryn and Raquel. You're not alone, Raquel. I hope to see you tomorrow. Super califragilis and uh, Elizabeth and Angela and Anita. Thanks, you guys. Have a great day.